Hey, what's up, YouTubers, and welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts Vintage Magazine flip through video. Today is Saturday. As I'm recording this, I got pretty much all of my chores done today. I got the grass cut dishes done. I'm waiting for one more load of laundry in the dryer to fold. I try to get everything done on Saturday so I can kind of just have a chill day on Sunday. But we're going to start the chill day now, Saturday evening. I'm joined here by the lovely ladies, Miss Hannah and Miss Heidi. And I have a stack of goodies here that I recently picked up. We're going to flip through some of these. There's quite a few here. There's, I think there's about 17 books here. So get yourself comfortable, get a beverage and a snack, kick your feet up, and let's check out some old vintage horror magazines. So what I'll do first is I'll just kind of flip through and show you guys the covers of the 17 books or so. I think there's 17. And then we'll dive deep into a couple of these or a few of these. I'll try to make the video around an hour or so, give or take. So the first one here is a Marvel magazine called Monster Madness. We'll go through this one for sure. Next one is from December 1972. This one's called Weird. We'll go through that one. A couple of these are doubles that I already own, <clears throat> but I got these in a lot. The first two were not in a lot. The rest of these came in one lot. Um, so if I get a double or two, I'm not really concerned about that at this point. But eventually I'm going to have to start avoiding doubles just to kind of fill in the spots I'm missing but this is the famous monsters of filmland 1966 yearbook I also got famous monsters of filmland number 50 maybe we'll go through that one too I'll put that off to the side famous monsters of filmland number 54 this is a really nice one I like that cover a lot that's Famous Monsters of Filmland, number 58. Here is an Eerie magazine. This is number 15. Maybe we'll go through that one too. Put that out to the side. Monster World. I have a double of this one now. I'll put my doubles in a pile and maybe somebody wants to trade. <clears throat> if anybody's interested in making some trades, let me know. Here's Monster World. Uh, what number is this one? It doesn't say on the cover. This might be number one. I'm not sure. Oh, it says right here, number four. Number four. Really nice cover, too. I love the creature. The Gill Man, as he's known. Here's Monster World number five. This is a magazine called The Mole People. I'll pull this one off to the side. I haven't checked this one out yet, so it'll be interesting to kind of go through that together with you for the first time. This one's called Horror of Party Beach. I think this one's from the early 60s. I'll pull it off to the side. We'll flip through that one. I, I was really interested in this one. <clears throat> this is called Screen Thrills Illustrated. And it has a couple different stories, one called The Sinister Spider and His Celluloid Web. I was really interested in the Marx Brothers, their maddest movies. A really big Marx Brothers fan. And Sabu, Hero of Modern Arabian Nights. Maybe I'll save this one for a different day to flip through, but I am interested to check that out. And then we have a couple of these, um, I think it's Larry Ivy. Monsters and Heroes. This is number seven, put out by Acme. This one has, uh, I guess, stories about the mummy and the green hornet. It's a pretty nice cover, too. 
Uh, we'll save this for a different video, but at some point I would like to flip through that here too. And Larry Ivy's Monsters and Heroes number six. This one has a little bit of damage. There's a little bit of cover damage there, and it looks like something was spilled at some point, but it's just, it almost looks like it's rusty. Like it's something rusted. I don't know if it was, I don't know what it was. With this, like I said, this one has a Flash Gordon and the world of John Carter. I would like to upgrade this at some point, but this will be a good reading copy. And then this is a book I know nothing about. I've never heard of this one before, but it looks cool and it was thrown in with the, the lot. So this one is called Dread of Night. I think this is a more modern book. It's number one. The uh, sticker price or whatever you want to call it was $3.95. I think this is a book from the 90s. The early 90s, I think. And then I have a book called Shriek, which this is also a double. It's another Ac <coughs> Acme magazine. It was kind of a competitor of Warren. So I'm going to pause it here. We went through all the covers, and I guess we'll just go start going through this little pile here, and we'll enjoy some of, the, some of these old vintage horror magazines. Monster Madness from Marvel Monster Group, number two, had a 60 cent price tag. And at the bottom here it says it was by Sinister Stan Lee. Movie Monsters You'll Love to Hate. And you can see it has a little word bubble there that says better cut out the sweets for a while. You mean, you, you mean my hairspray isn't hypoallergenic? Okay, so we're going to have, it's going to be silliness, which is fine. Looks like it's from 1973. I thought this was from the 60s, but I was way off. You can see again there, it's copyright 1973. There's Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. Great show, one of my favorites as a kid growing up. So I wasn't really sure what I was getting into with this magazine, but it looks like it's just kind of ridiculousness, kind of silliness word bubbles are that are jokes they're making fun of some of these early movies uh, this isn't really not my style but it's, I'm glad to have this just because it's an older book but I'm not really into this you know the, this uh, silly humor putting word bubbles out of Frankenstein's mouth it says jolly green giant my eye keep running Butch Patrick played Eddie Munster. I'll go through this one kind of quick just because it, it looks like it's just more of the same on each page. We'll say though that the magazine is in very good condition for the for the age. It's a 50 year old book. Um, wasn't her name Julie I forget uh, she re she passed away recently within like the last five or six years I think um, I'm drawing a blank on her name I, and I shouldn't I think her, her last name was Andrews or her first name was she wasn't Julie Andrews I'm drawing a blank. I don't want to make an ass out of myself, so I'm not even going to guess. But she was a very lovely actress. There's Godzilla versus Kong. There's the Metaluna Mutant from, I believe, this island Earth.
I love the old photos. I just I think those word bubbles are pretty stupid. So this must be a contest because they have an empty word bubble here. It says for you to fill in. And then it looks like there's some kind of a form here you can mail it to. It says uh, send your eerie little entry to Sinister Stan. And I will be honest, I, <clears throat> I probably won't buy more magazines from this particular line here. But like I said, it's good to have one of these. Uh, and this was not very pricey, it was very affordable. Invisible Man. I try not to make the pages squeak because that drives me nuts. Especially when you're trying to have a chill video and you get the, the, the sound. What does it say? Who called my kid a monkey? These are really, really bad jokes. These aren't even dad jokes. I really love that monster. That's the Metaluna mutant again from this island earth. I have the seven inch horror figure of that. It's really cool. I think uh, this magazine came out to about eight bucks, I think if you break it down for the lot that I bought or for what I paid for the lot for each magazine it was about eight bucks all right gonna pause it here and we'll get into the next one horror of party beach famous films it's in really good condition it has a 35 cent price tag Looks like it was barely red because the um, pages aren't don't even have any bends in them yet. The cover doesn't even look like it's been opened. This is a magazine from 1964. Warren Publishing. Man, Warren really had they had a lock on the on these magazines back then. Looks like this one's another kind of a. Uh, word bubble type magazine and there were no ads in the first one and I'm wondering if this is going to be more of the same it looks like it is so we won't spend too much time on this it looks like this is an actual story though and instead of having like animated or cartoon panels these are um, live action photos or stills from movies too much time. I want to get into some of the better ones. I, want, I like looking at the old ads and some of the old write-ups and stuff like that. Here's a couple of ads in the back. These are always interesting too. These are the back issues order forms. And uh, Let's see. So it says zoom into orbit with the new look in magazines. You can buy Spaceman magazine, the rare unusual publication, only one of its kind in the world. Those look really cool. 
And how much were they back then? This was a 1962 magazine. Um, I'm not seeing a date. Oh, here's, it says right there, 50 cents for number five, six, also 50 cents, and then you get seven and eight for 60 cents. Or you can send $2 for a four issue subscription. Hmm. And we have Screen Thrills Illustrated. And they're also four fifty or sixty cents a piece. And famous monsters. What were they charging for these? You can still kind of use this today as a reference guide to some of the issues you're missing and then kind of search for them. And let's see, there were, a, looks like they were a buck for some of the early uh, issues and then it went down to 50 and 60 cents for some of the, I guess, more recent issues at that time. So that was uh, Horror of Party Beach. Next one is uh, Universal Pictures Mole People. I was really excited about this one. It also has a 35 cent price tag. It's in pretty good shape. And I believe this magazine is from 1964. If you guys are good at Roman numerals, I believe MCMLX is um, 1960 and then IV is 4. So I think that's 1964. I could be wrong about that. If somebody wants to correct me, you can go ahead and do that in the uh, description or in the uh, comments section. But this is basically a word panel for the Mole People movie and it looks really good. This is very well done. I'm more into this type of a magazine than I am like the silly foolishness, but I mean, it, there's a time and a place, I guess, for, for all of these at some point, but I'm more into like the serious monster movies, the seriousness of them instead of having jokes on every panel. And this, mo or this movie, this, uh, this book is in really good condition considering, you know, that it's 60 years old. And it looks like it was at least very gently read or maybe not read at all. Very glad to have this. Those monsters are awesome. Love these old monster movies. I have a uh, seven inch mole figure too. Here we go, here's some mail order goodies. You can get skull mugs. Looks like one mug is a dollar, or if you get three mugs, it's 250. You can get a Dracula rubber bat for 75 cents. Which that seems like kind of a ripoff, unless it's huge, but it seems like you can get a rubber bat at a dollar store today for a buck, and it was 75 cents 60 years ago. A monster hand, 
It says it was the werewolf. A dollar fifty each, or three dollars for two. So you're not really saving money by buying two. You get a werewolf siren ring for seventy-five cents. This is all garbage. All this stuff is probably still like a buck today at like a dime store. Horrible Herman, frightening Asiatic insect right there. And that is 75 cents each. Spook show in your own home. I think that's a booklet and it's a buck. A shock monster. It's a mask that will shock people. Two bucks, it's a rubber mask. This is called a girl vampire. It looks like it's also another mask. It's a dollar forty-nine. I think that one was a plastic mask. Uh, teenage werewolf, dollar forty-nine for the mask. Cyclops, dollar forty-nine. And a monster foot. Again, you can get one for a dollar fifty or the set of the pair for three bucks. It's a ghoul mask. Horrible melting man. Screaming skull. These are actually pretty cool. I like these. Lagoon monster. They would look really nice, I think, displayed if you can find these. I'm sure there's probably some out there somewhere but you're going to you're going to be paying a lot more than a dollar 49 for them. Maybe I'll take a look and see if I can find some of these. Mummy. Here's a super Frankenstein mask. Covers the entire head for $3.98. If you want to pause and read that there. And then here is the full face Frankenstein for 2 bucks. You get an 8 millimeter motion picture projector. I've been in the market for a movie projector for a few years now, and I've come close a couple of times to purchasing one, but for one reason or another, I didn't. Um, because I'm looking for, I think, the perfect sale for me, and I haven't found that yet. It's been pretty close. So either they're very expensive, and it just kind of drove me away from the price from buying it. Or there's little things here and there that are wrong and I don't feel like having it repaired. So, and a lot of these older projectors, they don't really sell parts for anymore. So that's another reason that I haven't purchased one yet. But I will at some point buy one and I'm going to buy a couple of reel-to-reels and I may make a video about that. Or I'm sure, I, I'm sure I'll make a video about that if I do get that. And I'll put it on one night or something like that and then I'll just kind of record how it looks what movies playing whatever here is a Venus flytrap I had one of these when I was a kid and I ended up killing it because an accident because I was putting too much stuff in its mouth I was putting little pieces of hamburger in its mouth and it would it would close it to eat it but then it was getting like uh, mold I was pretty dumb when I was a kid I guess I, most kids are but yeah, it was not, they're not designed to just keep mowing down, you know, pounds of meat. And it got moldy and died. <laughs> but yeah, that was my, my one and only experience with Venus flytraps. Here's a Superman figure. It looks really nice. It was only $1 plus 35 cents for postage and handling. That looks really great. I think that's well worth a buck even back 60 years ago. And here is a horror scope movie viewer. Kind of like a Viewmaster, maybe, or looks like. I'm not sure. I've never seen one like this. I did used to own several different Viewmasters when I was a kid. It wasn't quite like that, but it was similar. There we go. Here's a book called Tales of Mystery and Imagination by Boris Karloff. 
Is it by him or of him? I don't know. But it looks like it's $1.98. Edgar Allan Poe's The House of Fright. The Fall of the House of Usher, also $1.98. Music for Robots. These are all books. Drop Dead. War of the Worlds. Terror, The Son of Horror. And are these, these look like these are albums over here. Are these all albums or are these books? Hmm. I love all of this stuff. It says this is a complete collection of horror and monster movies. Abbott and Costello, Rock and Roll, War of the Planets. Killer Gorilla. So these are 16 millimeter and they're $10.75. Wait, hold on. Let me reread that. It says it's only $5.75 for the 8 millimeter and $10.75 for the 16 millimeter. So these are real to real. This is way before VHS, even. That's the only way you can watch movies at home back then was on, on tape. And I'm sure back then there were guys and gals who had the whole collection. There were collectors even back then. And they probably couldn't wait to, for the new ones to come out at the time, just like we do now. So these are horror classics on 8mm film. Get the Vampire Bat, Terror of Dracula, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. And these are The Human Monster is $10.95. The Vampire Bat, four ninety five. dollars Terror of Dracula, nine ninety five. dollars And the Cabinet of Doc Dr. Caligari, it says it's a complete hour and a quarter hour film for $34.95. Back in the 1960s, $34.95 had to be at least a few hundred, a couple hundred or a few hundred dollars in today's money. So you had to really be a huge fan to to order a movie in 1964 for 35 bucks and then you can buy some back orders of the famous monsters I was pretty happy with this book it's really nice mole people eerie number 15 in really really good condition I love the color scheme. I think purples and black and yellow together looks really good. I've mentioned that before. But especially purples and black. And then when you threw in that yellow, it just kind of pops. It looks really nice. So this one is um, the Doll Collector. Again, this thing was like barely red, if even red at all. It's a book from 1968. June of 1968 to be exact. You can see the table of contents there, all the different stories that are in this book. I really think these books are amazing. Creepy, eerie, Vampirella. They're really, really good. They're fun to collect. They're getting to be more and more pricey, but I, I guess that's to be expected. Everything is. You can get some back orders of eerie. Let's see what they're asking for number two. Number two, the collector's edition for a buck. This, this, these books are excellent. I'd be curious to know. Um, 
I never really know who's watching these. I, I only get a few comments, but I would be interested to hear if any of you guys have any of these books or if you collect any of the eerie or creepy or famous monsters or any of these vintage horror magazines. And if you'd be interested in maybe making a trade for some doubles. It's not that, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I wouldn't sell them probably. I'll just either trade them or give them away. Maybe I'll give them away in a contest. If I ever do make it to 10,000 subscribers, I will have a huge giveaway. And it'll probably be my biggest giveaway. And I'll probably have enough prizes for like the first five winners. So there's going to be five winners, but uh, I, I'm not sure if I'll ever make it to 10,000. I'm, I'm really, I'm under like 9,500. I'm getting pretty close to 9,500, but um, I've been, the channel's been really slow growing the last year, especially. I thought I would hit 10,000 by the end of this year, but I don't think that's going to happen. So it may be like in the middle of next year. I need about 500 plus subscribers. But I will give away some pretty cool stuff if I do hit 10K. It'll be a subscriber thank you giveaway. So you'll have to be subscribed, and that's the whole purpose of it. So if you know anybody who would be interested in watching videos like this, share the video with them, or if you uh, leave a comment or a thumbs up, um, sometimes that gets into the YouTube algorithm and more people will watch it. I'm not even sure how the algorithm works. I don't think anybody really knows how that works, but I think the more views, the more thumbs up and stuff, YouTube is more apt to share it. And check these out. These are really cool. I usually don't talk about that on the channel. Like, I'd never ask for people to sub or comment or well I, I do ask for comments but only about like movies I'm showing but I never say you know sp smash that like button or <laughs> make sure you sub I feel like if you guys are interested in the channel you'll sub without even being told to Todd what are you doing here Yeah, these are great books. Really love this. Check this out. Send away for your official Batmobile scale model for 98 cents plus 27 cents postage. And here's the Green Hornet Black Beauty. What a beautiful car. Wow. And you can get some paperback illustrated books. The Vault of Horror, Tales from the Crypt, Tales of the Incredible. You can get two bucks for two books for a dollar, three books for a buck fifty, or all four for two bucks. And then you can order some of the back issues of Creepy. And these are all, uh, looks like the number one issue is two dollars and fifty cents. The rest are a buck or less. Here is the first Famous Monsters of Filmland hobby kit. The Forgotten Prisoner of Castle Mare. That is great. Wow. Here's the first in a series of new Famous Monsters of Filmland hobby kits made by Aurora, the greatest name in all plastic assembly kits. The Forgotten Prisoner is eight and three eighths inches high four and a half inches wide and he may never make the best dressed list but what a kit order yours today only 98 cents that is pretty cool that is really nice and you can get an ant farm you know I, I used to have an ant farm when I was a kid and those fellas never grew anything that's an old um, Mitch Hedberg joke 
you can get a live <laughs> a live monkey come on there's got to be there's got to be something no way for 20 bucks you can get a real live baby squirrel monkey 14 inches long what that would never fly today Peter would be all over it and here are some of the monster world books Eerie number 15. Next one up is called Weird from 1972. And this one's in a little rough shape, but I still want to show it. Although the, the cover looks pretty good. The page quality on the inside is probably one of the worst I've ever seen as far as uh, tanning and staining. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Or in a couple seconds but you can see that it had looks like it was maybe wet at one time or at least in some spots but it doesn't affect the reading of the book or anything so but the page quality gets worse as we go it gets pretty dark the, these books are amazing they're pretty gory, they're pretty scary. And this is everything that I like in, in books like this. And I'll be honest with you guys, I, I much prefer these horror magazines to any comic book that's out there. I like comic books, but I, I much prefer magazines. I think they're better. And that's just my humble opinion. I'm sure everybody has their own opinions. Pretty good artwork in here. And even though the pages are dark, they call it tanning, um, it doesn't affect the story at all. Everything still looks pretty good. So we have one more magazine after this one. If you guys would like to see more of these, do hit the thumbs up or and or comment. And that will let me know that you'd like to see more of these. These This type of video generally does not get very many hits on my channel, but I'll do it for you guys if you're still interested in watching these. And these books are great. I'm skipping pages. I'm grabbing like two or three at a time just to kind of save a little time here. But These books are really, really cool. And we have some more ads on the back. Just on the back cover, you can get a seven foot tall Frankenstein's monster with glow in the dark eyes for a buck. You can get a Raquel Welch pillow for $1.98. I mean, I can only imagine what some of the guys would have done to that pillow. Good luck putting your head on that after. Uh, you can buy a 22 caliber pellet gun. You can buy a bald wig. <laughs> X-ray specs, another gun, a knife, 
This is America, damn it. Here's an 8mm motion picture projector for $6.98. And a secret book safe. It opens up and uh, you, th you think it's a book when it's on the shelf, but you open it up and there's a little hidden compartment in there with a combo lock. And you can hide money or your drugs. Maybe you got your little bag of weed or your little bag of yayo, and you can just hide that from your ma in another gun. So yeah, this was a, another cool book. Really glad to have this. This is Weird from 1972. And before we close this book out, I just want to see who publishes this book. Oh, it's published by Erie Publications. Okay, that's right. So Erie Publications was a competitor of the Warren magazines and Famous Monsters magazines. Last one for this video. Oh, and by the way, Hannah is out. She's knocked the F out. Told you this was a chill day. Famous Monsters of Filmland, number 50. This book is in like brand new condition. It looks like it just came out of, off the printing press. Really, really nice condition. There's a 50 cent price tag. Fiftieth anniversary issue. July of nineteen sixty eight. Man, Warren really had some great magazines. I know these were really popular during their day, but I <clears throat> I rarely hear anybody talk about these. It's almost like it's a niche a niche kind of a uh, collectible. There are some guys on here who collect them and they've known about them for years and years, but it seems like not too many people these days are talking about these books. It's almost like they're kind of forgotten. I should have pulled out a Vampirella. We can have well, I'll get, maybe I'll do that in the next next time if we ever do another flip through. I'll do some Vampirella. Devil bat. So this video will be less than an hour, but I feel like people don't really watch to the very end anyway. There's a couple people that do, and there's a way that I can tell that they do. And thank you for those of you who watch my full videos. I really do appreciate you guys. So if you made it to the end of this one, leave a comment below that says hashtag quest for 10,000 because that's my biggest goal right now for this channel is to hit 10K. I'm about a little over 500 subscribers away from that. So if you made it to the end, just hashtag quest for 10,000. That's kind of a wink and a nod to me like, hey man, I got you. I watched your whole video and I do appreciate that. Check that out. Get some of the eerie back issues also if you have a vintage horror magazine collection and if you have YouTube videos or a YouTube channel you can always comment below and we will subscribe to your channel and support your channel as well and watch your video because I love watching this kind of stuff
So here we have some ads again. We have some Hollywood masks and Dracula and the Metaluna Mutant are sold out at this point. But you still can get Frankenstein, Wolfman, Gillman, the Mummy, the Mad Doctor, Hunchback sold out. The Gorilla, Phantom of the Opera, Mole People, and Mr. Hyde. And it looks like those, let me see. They range anywhere from $17 up to $34. And then there's some back order magazines. Here's one that we already, we just went through that one earlier. That's a great magazine, by the way. I really recommend it. And you watched it on the channel. If you liked what you saw, try to seek it out and purchase it. And then here we have some of the same ads about the uh, ant farm and the monkey and monster hand. Silent Dog Whistle, Monster Ring, stuff like that. I guess this is the horror villain that was the inspiration for the Joker in Batman. The movie's called The Man Who Laughs. And then I believe it's, is that Peter Lorre? It sure is. Looks like that guy got attacked by a trash can or one of those uh, smoking receptacle things where you can put your cigarettes out. There's June Lockhart, Lost in Space. Here's Rasputin, the monk, the mad monk. Is this the giant colossal man? Oh, it says, um, The Thief of Baghdad. Hercules and the Haunted World. That looks good. I don't think I've ever seen Hercules in the Haunted World, although I am aware of it. I, I know that it is a thing. I just never see, I've never seen it. I'm going to have to check it out, hunt it down, and buy it. can buy some long playing record albums it says famous monsters speak Karloff really nice stuff man this is stuff I would have been interested in if I was around back then this was way before my time but let's see here 80 year young Boris Karloff here is uh, Sir Donald Wolfitt, died in 1968. You can watch Batman home movies on 8mm film. And these are all the different chapters you can buy. And it looks like they were $5.49 each episode plus 25 cents shipping. And then here's other great 8mm movies. You know, this is kind of stoking the inner fire for me. I've, I've wanted to buy a reel-to-reel -reel projector for, like I said, several years now. And I'm going to... It kind of comes and goes in cycles. Like, I'll for like a month straight, I'll be looking for them. And then I kind of forget about it for a couple months. And then I start thinking about them again. And... I didn't really think about them until now again. So I'm going to start checking those out and see if I can just pull a trigger and grab one. What are these now? These are also LP records. These look really great. The Invisible Man. These look really amazing. I'm going to see if I can find some of these. I'll show them in an upcoming video if I do. So that was it for the magazine flip through. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if you made it till the end, hashtag quest for 10,000. If you could share the video, give it a thumbs up, um, leave a comment if you want to. You, you won't hear me say these things very often, but um, every once in a while I, I will kind of talk about the thumbs up and stuff. But for the most part, you won't hear me talk about that. So for Miss Hannah, 
and Miss Heidi, who she just jumped down. I'm your boy, Toddy Walnuts. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Later.